At CENCAG, our vision is a connected, thriving region of small towns, urban centers, active waterfronts, and an abundance of parks, trails, and natural areas. Southeast Michigan's recreation system highlights our unique natural landscapes and provides opportunities to be active and enjoy the great outdoors all year long. Parks also enhance the quality of life throughout the region. When people are asked what they like about living in Southeast Michigan, we often hear parks and trails near the top of the list. There are more than 2,600 parks in the region that cover 200,000 acres altogether. And there's nearly 500 miles of regional trails that connect them. So to see that all these pieces work together as a regional system and that they meet the needs of our communities, uh, SEMCOG developed the Parks and Recreation Plan. Data is the foundation for so much of what SEMCOG does, and the same is true for parks. And in recent years, we've put a lot of our data resources together to develop planning tools that will support our recreation system, including the Southeast Michigan Park Finder and Trail Explorer apps. These are interactive online maps and mobile applications that make it easy for local officials to see how their parks fit into the regional system and for residents and visitors to see just what Southeast Michigan's parks have to offer. That can be ice skating rinks in the wintertime, public beaches on inland and Great Lakes shorelines, and tons of other amenities that are out there to enjoy. Did you know that the region has more than 450 miles of trails on its waterways for paddling, uh, with more than 100 launch points in our parks? More than 1,000 picnic areas. Over 400 basketball courts. 230 parks with tennis courts. More than 250 soccer fields. SEMCOG's Parks and Recreation Plan includes six regional policies that we can all work towards together. The first is to integrate health and wellness initiatives with outdoor recreation opportunities. So Parks and Recreation play a huge impact on community health and wellness. There are all kinds of studies that have been done over the years about what that does for, for our mental health and even really for our physical health, how it lowers your blood pressure. Just to be out here in the, in the fresh air and hearing the birds and, and seeing the water. So I don't think it can be overstated how important that parks and recreation are to the health and well-being of our communities. There really is a huge variety and it allows people to find the activity that they're most interested in and get after the health and wellness side of it in their own unique ways. Today we have a perfect example of a group called Park Run and it's a, it's a free 5K every Saturday morning. That's something that's picked up uh, by people of all ages. It builds community. That's the first thing. We have our annual picnic here inside the park. Uh, where we bring the whole neighborhood together, come out with uh, you know networking and fellowship uh, in order to meet your neighbors and get to know them better. The second policy is to ensure equitable access to recreation opportunities for people of all backgrounds, ages, and abilities. Parks kind of are like a unification hub. So the have transit, transportation in order to be able to access those parks are very important. Um, but to make sure that it's even across the board, no matter ethnic background, cultural diversity, um, social economic standing, if you're in Highland Park, if you're in Livonia, wherever the case may be, that folks have the ability to get to their park system, that they're able to feel safe, that they have newer amenities, and that they're able to be able to enjoy that either active or at passive recreation. From the beginning, this park has been all about accessibility. Next to us, we have a housing cooperative of about 2,000 people, and this park has allowed that community and the neighboring uh, single family homes in the area to have access to park facilities that they didn't have before. A barrier free park is designed so that all aspects of the play is accessible to anybody. It uh, doesn't matter for what reason, if they're in a wheelchair or a walker, every part of the park is accessible from the parking lot to every part of the play structure. The next policy is to promote the economic value of parks and recreation in Southeast Michigan. You know, when you're talking about attracting younger talent, younger families, the parks and rec component becomes a very important piece of that to, to really bring young talent to your area. And from an economic development means, you know, as these companies look to locate here, they also are looking to have other opportunities for their employees. And that's why this importance of the Parks and Rec is so critical to St. Clair County. 
Oakland County Parks uh, plays host to nearly uh, 2 million visitors uh, per uh, year coming from uh, neighboring counties uh, as well. You can see where these are uh, attraction for people to live and to start a business or to become employed in Oakland County because of the desired quality of life we have here. River Raisin National Battlefield Park in 2018 actually had over 240,000 visitors. Most of those visitors were actually from outside this region. We had visitors from all 50 states and 16 foreign nations that signed in at our logbook here at the Visitor Center. Now, as the park continues to develop and to grow, uh, visitors from around the world are learning about its international significance and in coming here. Now, what does that tabulate into economic benefit? Well, for the region, uh, last year, River Raisin National Battlefield Park provided between 10.1 and 19.4 million dollars to the local economy from external dollars coming in uh, to the community. The plan also includes a policy to support conservation and stewardship of both natural and cultural resources in balance with outdoor recreation opportunities. We try to uh, make each of our uh, parks a destination for uh, recreation and uh, environmental education. Environmental um, stewardship and conservation really is, is part of what drove the creation of the Metro Parks. And we worked with partners at every level, in the public sector and the private sector, and now our osprey population is thriving. Um, we have several endangered species that exist in the Metro Parks, from, from rattlesnakes to, to plants. Um, and we take really good care of them because it's our responsibility to preserve them for future generations. As part of our Parks and Rec uh, in downtown Port Heron, there's roughly a mile long shoreline and St. Clair County Parks and Rec recently picked up the southern piece of that and has created a wetlands park. And what the wetlands park really helps with the stormwater runoff, the clean water initiatives, seeing a lot of habitat come back that we haven't had in a long time is just uh, part of the whole, I think, greater restoration efforts along the Great Lakes. Raising awareness among Southeast Michigan's residents and visitors about outdoor recreation and tourism opportunities is the next policy. Connecting to, to, the, to the public is important because you need to get out and see nature. We're fortunate in Michigan to have that. It starts in your backyard, your front door, and so you get the local people that come to your trail, uh, mom, dad, grandpa, grandkids, and they get out and walk. But then when people get to know them, you know, they're advertised, and the, and the person that you're riding a bike next to may be from Germany or from California, and you see that all over the state. It's a huge attraction. People want to stay not a day, but three days. They want to stay a week. They'd like to see Michigan. We have a great opportunity here. Over 190 parts of fishing access. 35 disc golf courses. 35 campgrounds. There are over 1,800 locally owned parks. Seeing that these are all implemented successfully depends on the final policy to foster collaboration among outdoor recreation stakeholders. In order to connect all these regional parks together, you can't control all the land at once. So partnerships are necessary for these types of projects. And so collaboration is key. When I first got on the board 15 years ago, we had one park and we realized at the time how important it was to partnership up with the different state agencies, the community foundations with assistance from SEMCOG to really help define you know, some of these assets that we were able to uh, essentially go and apply for grants to, to create a better parks and rec environment. So I, I can't say enough good things about the partnerships and how we've been able to really uh, leverage that. The more we collaborate between our different organizations and entities, the more we can come together and make effective uses of our resources, whether they be natural resources, water resources, fiscal resources. Collaboration between our different counties is critical. 
River Raisin National Battlefield Park is a very unique national park in that we actually have multiple units in two counties. We actually work with 22 different political subdivisions as well as 77 federally recognized tribes and numerous community groups, uh, both uh, corporate and non. Partnerships are the key uh, to the development and sustaining of, of parks, whether it's through maintenance, uh, acquisition, restoration, or even constructing new amenities and assets in parks. The whole picture is we can't do it by ourselves in the silo. So we have a number of partnerships and know we have to develop those partnerships in order to provide the best possible service for those users to our park system from across um, Wayne County and the region as well. We look forward to working with our local governments, parks, and others to implement this plan. And we are excited about what the future holds for the region's parks. As we work together to enhance our outdoor amenities and connect more people to recreation opportunities, we know that our parks, trails, and natural areas will continue to define Southeast Michigan as a great place to live, work, visit, and most important, play.